You know the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> you know the vibes. Each and every time we're back, Mo, BJ, the Hoop Jeans podcast presented by NBA 2K23. How long have you been waiting to do that? Yeah, forever. Yeah, forever. Forever. That's the start. <laughs> so we just here in LA. First of all, go and order 2K through the link in the description. I've told you guys this enough. If you've been listening to the show and you still haven't done it yet, I don't know why, but go do that. But anyway, we're here. And you know what? I just had a thought, right? Because I'm in this office. This is BJ's office. And it looks pretty cool. You've got Kareem. You've got the great Wilt Chamberlain. And of course, rest in peace to the great Bill Russell. And then, you know, I, I had a list of topics that we want to talk about on our okay. show. But being in this room, you know, there's the, there's the championship jacket from BJ's championship over there. There's a ball from... I think the NBA Finals over there. There's so much greatness in this room. There's even a statue of Michael Jordan where only 23 of them were made in the world. So I was thinking about all these different things that we could talk about. Okay. And then I opened my phone and I saw some disrespect. Gilbert Arenas back at it once again. Oh. After he disrespected Giannis. Okay. Is now, apparently, I just saw the tweet. I didn't listen to the show because after what he said about Giannis, I said, I'm not listening to his show anymore. Okay. He said, Larry Bird is not in the top 10 NBA players of all time and he can quite easily not include him. So I wanted to put you on the spot because you've not prepared for this. You didn't know I was going to ask you this. Yes. And I didn't know I was going to ask it until I saw all these jerseys on the wall. BJ Armstrong, I want to get your top 10 players of all time because here's where I struggle with it. For me, the NBA game has evolved so much. The three-point line did not exist. So I don't include players who played before the three-point line because I feel like it's wrong to compare them to the players of today. So when I make a top 10, I don't include a Will Chamberlain or a Bill Russell. And that's not out of disrespect to them. That's out of respect to them that I don't want to compare them to the players from what I call the monitor. Because the three-point line was introduced in, what, 1979, 80? Was it 1980 they bought the three-point line around, in? Yeah, somewhere so around. I rank players from then onwards. I don't include anyone from before because I think that's too difficult to compare. But when you make your top 10 list, you can do it all time. You can do it from 1980 onwards if you want to do that. Because that's what I do because I don't want to compare LeBron James with Bill Russell because the LeBron fans will be mad at me. But also, I feel like it's an impossible comparison to make. But BJ, I want to get your top 10 of all time. We're going right. to start at one and okay. work our way well, back. We, we, before we do this list, you have to put it in it. And I would say proper context, but I'll put it in my context because this is my list. Mm -hmm. First of all, you know, when you start saying who's the greatest, it's hard for me to say that. Why? Because when you play, you understand the eras, the training, the way the game was taught, the facilities. Mm -hmm. There's so many things. The equipment, uh, the way coaches every, thought every so, single you know, detail. All, all, all these things. So crazy. for me to for me to think that I could have played in 1970 and started shooting like today's players, the coaches would be yeah. like, "What is this guy yeah. doing? Get him out of here!" This is this is like the JJ Redick Bob Cousy thing we spoke about. Yeah. You put JJ Redick in the game back then. Who is he? And you put Bob Cousy today with the training facilities, the the physios, all the other stuff, the evolution of the game, learning from players that came right. before. That's why basketball is an evolu evolving sport, right? Because you learn it's, things it's from like, players, it's, you add them to your game, and you keep it moving forward. And, so. the, and the game continues to evolve. The arenas, where they play it, how they travel, like, what they eat, all of this. I'll things. tell you the level of details, right? In the Madison Square Garden, they changed the lighting a few years ago. Um, so that the crowd was darker so that the players could focus more on shooting and have less distractions from the crowd. That's why photos from MSG and the Staples Center or the Crypto Center and the Boston Arena, they look better than all the other arenas in the league because they have they have designed it in a way that the lights right. shine less on the crowd. And like that's the level of detail that NBA teams are going to to try and find success. Well, yeah, so I mean, that, that, some that, context. That, that, you still got to find guys who can shoot and put the ball in the basket. That yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but this is what I mean. It's like the game now is completely different to the game back then. So, all right. So, I, first I want to say that. And then you start saying top ten. Okay. There are so many incredible, amazing players. Okay. I just say the following. There are probably more than top than ten phenomenal players. We could list 100. Okay. In my way of thinking, there are three play My list right now would be incomplete because there's still three players right now who are still playing. I think 
are worthy to at least to be considered. You got to consider LeBron James. Of course. You got to consider Kevin Durant. And you got to consider Giannis. But they're still playing. And it's still time for them to be in that list. They still have time to either make their case or not be in the list. Mm -hmm. But without question, those three players, for me, are still like, Giannis is like, wow. LeBron James, you can make an argument. And Kevin Durant, he's like, man, that's as unique of a player that I've seen at his position and at his size. Whether you agree with it or not, he is <laughs> that level of score uh, for me. Now, without listening to the podcast, I don't care who you are, where you from, and I, and I, I can't say what I really want to say, but I will say <laughs> the this. The BJ too nice. Larry Bird is in everyone's list. He's he's grandfathered into the list. Now yes. you may you may not have him one. You might have him at ten, but you're not going to have him at eleven. Yep. He's he Larry Bird. Okay, there's basketball, and when you say basketball, Larry Bird's name is somewhere very close to the to that word basketball. Okay, mm -hmm. he he was that good. What he he doesn't need me to defend him on this podcast. Just go take the time, people, to go see it for yourself. You don't you, you YouTube know, is I, your I, friend. Just you, just search Larry Bird. Do it for yourself. You got to do. And then when you watch him and you see how complete of a player that he was, then let's have a discussion. It doesn't need me to defend it or. Mm -hmm talk about somebody else or what have you. Larry Bird in any era, okay? Because when you say top 10, you, you, put, you can drop these players off in any era. Mm -hmm. Larry Bird in any era would be Larry Bird. Mm -hmm. That's how strong I feel about him. There's a few that I feel that strongly about. He's one of them. Larry, MJ. I think MJ has to be in everyone's top 10. If He's not in your top yeah, 10, then. Yeah, you, you know. Okay. Kareem. Start questioning. Magic, but that's question. four. So that's four already. So you got six. Russell plus. has to. Bill you Russell has Bill to Russell. be there. Will Chamberlain, Will Chamberlain has to be has to be there. Oscar Robertson has to be there. Okay. Okay. Now you can. Now and we can. Three see. more spots. Now okay. I said on the last show, if a larger one's not in your top ten, you don't know ball. Well, you, so you, you, a larger one's got to be in there. Tim Duncan, in my humble opinion, is he's in there. Shaquille O'Neal. Kobe Bryant. So this is this is why I asked this question, okay? Because there is no criteria for a top 10. Because saying it's a top 10, it's, hear what I'm saying with this. Saying someone is a top 10 basketball player, there are so many different variables. Are they top 10 career? Are they top 10 peak? Do you see what I'm saying? Because for me, there's a distinction between well, here, here's the thing a when top you 10 peak, like a Shaquille O'Neal, or a top 10 career, like a Tim Duncan. Do you see where I'm coming from? Because look how long Tim Duncan's well, disdained that level of greatness. Well, when you start saying top 10, when you start saying top 10, one, here, here's the thing that, that we all, and I, I just did the pause again. Here's the, <laughs> the, here's the thing that we all have to at least agree upon to some level of degree. When you talk about these phenomenal players, phenomenal, I mean, like, just off the charts, mm -hmm. they all have a similar theme. And they're big. Well, we, we didn't even mention Steph Curry, who I think has a claim to be in the top ten. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You can, you can make your claim. But they're all big, they're strong, and they're athletic. They're big, they're strong, and they're athletic. Okay. Even though Larry Bird didn't look athletic. Larry Bird was 6'10". Mm-hmm. Larry Bird was big for a small forward. Larry Bird was strong, okay? He might have been, not been athletic, but he is what we would consider in today's game a ground athlete. Mm -hmm. Larry Bird took up space, and his basketball acumen or whatever you want to call it was second to none. Agreed. Okay? And when you start, and that's why I look at these three guys today. LeBron is big, he's strong, and he's athletic. Giannis, okay, 
You say, well, what about Kevin Durant? Kevin Durant is seven foot. He's a seven footer. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's athletic and he can play through contact at seven feet at the two guard position. Okay. When you, and Kevin Durant is unique because if you look at the greatest scoring two guards in the history of the game, you know, there's three that just really kind of stand out to me. There's Michael, obvious. Mm -hmm. There's George Gervin. And there's Kevin Durant. And there's Kobe Bryant. Kobe is there, but he doesn't have the size of these other guys. Okay. Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant is a phenomenal, phenomenal. But when you say, when you say big, strong, athletic, Kobe wasn't 6'7 like the ice. Okay. Like George. Okay. I, I hear what you're like, saying. You follow what I'm saying? Just, I just hear what you're unique. Saying, but Kobe was a Kobe was a Kobe was listen, there's there's been guys who can just score. He can just score. But when you say unique, he was just a unique this kid, Kevin Durant, is just a unique, like, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I look at these guys and you say a top ten, you say, okay, Steph Curry, okay. I think Steph Curry, what he's achieved has been amazing. I, I can't say anything about Steph. But when you start saying top 10, okay, I can't put him in that category. With Why guys. not? Okay, the reason, because when you, you have to be able to affect the game in a lot of different areas. Mm -hmm. Steph Curry is playing in an era where he is the best Yes. At what he does in this era. I don't know if it translates to any other era. Okay. Okay. Again, when you say top 10, you got to just drop them off in any era. Okay. 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 I don't think we were shooting like that in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Mm -hmm. you, I'm not saying that you couldn't shoot like that. I'm just saying the, the way the game is played. Now, it's not to say that Steph, because Steph is a phenomenal player. He would have figured something else mm -hmm. out. Mm-hmm. But I don't think he would have started defending at a higher level. I don't think he would have started rebounding at a higher level. And I don't know if the way the game was played back then as a small guy mm -hmm. that you could have the same effect on the game. That's just the way the game was played. Not, no fault of his. Mm -hmm. That's what makes, in my opinion, the, the, the best small guy who's ever played was Isaiah Thomas. Okay. Okay. The reason being is because of the way he was able to affect the game and impose, you know, in an era where big guys were the dominant. I mean, it was a big man's game. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you were able to build a team literally around. He was the first one. You can't take that away. Now, Steph Curry has come around along. Is the second one. I know. Is there been another guy? I, I can't right off the people top. People claim, like you know, people make claims, but in terms of a small one, Allen Iverson. Yeah, but he didn't. But he he wasn't. Didn't, he didn't win. He didn't. He didn't win. He didn't win a championship. Yeah. So. So, Allen Iverson was a very unique player. Yeah. But as as far as small so guys go, what, even though he hasn't won a championship, I still put him in that category with. Some of the best small guys to ever do it. Uh, absolutely, because of look who he was playing with. You know what I'm saying? It's like absolutely. But but again, you say look who's playing with, but it, he couldn't have been Allen Iverson if he was playing with other guys who would take away. Yeah, but we'll never know. It's yeah, well, too well, late. Yeah, but, we'll well, never know. Yeah, but you, but yeah, we do know, and and I say that we do know is because when you the, the better players that you play with the more efficient you have to be. I don't think Allen Iverson was an efficient player. No, but if you if you were to give him this Warriors team, swap him and Steph. Yeah. You think he wouldn't still be as good as he was? Oh, Allen Iverson is going to be Allen Iverson. There we go. Allen Iverson is going to be Allen Iverson. However, do I think they would still win with – I don't I don't think so. So you don't – so like Allen Iverson, Clay Thompson, Harrison Barnes or Wiggins or Kevin Durant or whoever you want to three, Draymond and then whoever you want to five. No, because, it, because of the effectiveness of the three-point ball. Well, we see John Morant having a lot of success in the NBA today, and he's like... He's having a lot of success. We're talking about winning a championship. Okay. We, we, I mean, Steph Curry has won four. Yes. We're not... Success, 50 wins, getting to the NBA playoffs, that's great. Mm -hmm. We're saying 
the elite of the elite, mm -hmm. and we're saying the best of the best, do I think you could take perhaps, arguably, the greatest three-point shooter of all time off the team, replace him with a 30-point score, and get the same results? I don't know because the team was built around a guy who had a unique skill set. I feel you. you uh, that's all I'm saying. I'm I not saying they couldn't win one. I'm not saying they couldn't win two. Do I think they could, the way the team is currently constructed, do I think the dribble weave with Draymond and Allen Iverson would be just as effective as Steph and Draymond? I don't think so. Yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. You, you follow what, what I'm saying? My original point was the fact that Allen Iverson didn't win a championship, no, 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 I no, don't no, take that as a knock no, on his I'm, career. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not knocking that. As the team is constructed, Yes. Because you got to, you, you have to take the team construction of a team. Allen Iverson, what I really wish with Allen Iverson is, I wish he would have been a one. Mm -hmm. Because if you're looking at a player who was literally six feet. Mm -hmm. And what makes this incredible was the guy was averaging 30 points a game as a six foot two guard. And we just a couple episodes were talking about the problems of having Donovan Mitchell at the team. Yeah, yeah, and, and, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. And, but and Donovan Mitchell may be 200 pounds. This guy was 160 pounds, mm -hmm. soaking wet. I mean, Allen Iverson. Listen, you can't say anything about AI. Mm -hmm. But what I can say is, when you're constructing a team, yeah, he's so unique. You got to put unique people around him I feel you. to be AI. I feel you. Because I feel if you. you put him in a traditional sense, if you say AI, just be a point guard, you're not taking. It's like it's like Steph Curry with me. Mm -hmm. Like I can't just ask Steph Curry, you just be a point guard. I feel you. And, I, I, and I, the I same way, you're they, you follow what I'm saying. I can't wait. Now, from. can you construct a team around AI and the different circumstances and da da da? Yeah, yeah. It, it's but it's going to it's. Steph Curry is Steph Curry. That's a unique situation. I mean, Draymond Green yeah. is a unique, unique player. Unique, unique player. They were drafted onto in the second round. Grand. And it, look, it's great. But, but but my original point was, is when we're talking about the best because you were talking about the best small players of all time. So right. like Isaiah Thomas and Steph Curry is the right. world. I feel like people keep Allen Iverson. Not saying you, but as in in general, right. people keep Allen Iverson out of that conversation because he's never won. You, well, you, well, well you can't just, just say winning. You can't say you yeah. just can't say I winning. I want to say there's more factors that go into winning than just individual greatness. But I, I can say this because if we talk about individual greatness, then you can ask questions about Kevin Durant's place in these lists. Yeah, you, you, it's very, very. It's easier to build a team around a big than a little guy. Yeah, Allen Arvison, Listen, that required. <laughs> A lot of moving parts. Do you ever say like pound for pound, like boxing? Like pound for pound. I don't know if some may have been the best player in the NBA well, for you, a number you of can, years. You, you can't, you, listen, you can't argue his impact on the game. Mm -hmm. Allen Iverson was a force. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, he, he played with incredible heart, first of all, right? You can't measure a man's heart. He brought it. You can't measure that. The man played with pace and space we didn't even if you could you call this pace and space well Allen Iverson was on hyperdrive then mm. he was moving so fast he had energy he played in the passing lanes he did it all I mean he he did it all however if there's one thing you could say which requires you got to you got to have some creativity when you coach him is you had to let him be Allen Iverson you couldn't ask him to say Let's be efficient. You know, he might have six or seven, eight turnovers. And you got to live with that. Yeah. So let's get back, because this is an Adam Iverson episode. Let's get back to your top ten. So okay. do, we, do we round out the list? Can you give me the starting at one going down? Uh, what, I mean, you got to have Magic Bird. You got to have Michael. Mm-hmm. You got to have Kareem. That's four. Mm-hmm. You got to have Russell. That's five. Chamberlain, that's six. Oscar Robertson, seven. Mm hmm. Okay, Tim Duncan, that's eight. 
Okay. And then there's like top 10 players. Okay. Kobe Bryant, the late Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Akeem Olajuwon. Um, you know what I mean? There's a lot of, you've got two spots to fill, three spots to fill, and there's a lot of names. That could yeah, that's just saying, they, 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 you know, I mean, Julius Irving. You just got, you, 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 you have, you know, Jerry West. You can just, there's a lot of names that you can put in there. He's, but these are top 10 level players. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? These are like, these are the best. And then, you, you know, like for me, you know, you start looking, you say, okay, you, to be determined, Giannis. You know, if you said LeBron, Kevin, Dur- yeah. Durant, LeBron. I mean, the, these are to, to be determined. And if you put them in your list, I, I mean, I could, I could, yeah. that's legit. So, but there are some that, that's in there. And, and this started off with Larry Bird. Larry Bird is, Larry Bird is without question, <laughs> without question, he was that good. No doubt. He was, he was just that good. Of a, he was that great of a player. No doubt. Do you ever play the game if you put Larry Bird into today's NBA? Oh, man. How, oh. Many, how many is he giving you a night? With his mentality and playing in today's game, right, it, it probably wouldn't be fair. He'd probably play left hand the whole season and right handed in the playoffs. You know, um, you know, you know what, you know what would be interesting. Here's the thing that would be interesting for me. This is, you know, I don't look at like dropping players off. The thing that would be really interesting for me, and I, and people ask me, man, wouldn't you love to play in today's game? I'm not so sure I want to play in today's game, and here's why. Because I'm not so sure that I want to be coached by today's coaches. Why? Because I grew up in an era where the player coaching dynamic was very confrontational. Okay. And the coaches today can't be confrontational with the players. I don't know how I would have responded with that. I know what you mean. I, 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 it's, I it's a lot more like a family product on the side. Yeah, like everybody wants to. Like, like I hear players say all the time, like this is a family atmosphere. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand that, and I, and I, <laughs> and, 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 I and I'm saying that BJ but, saying I'm coming on smoke for the head coach. Yeah, I don't I, care who I, you are. I, I, I didn't. I never expected for me and the coach to get along. Okay. I, I, I don't know how. It would be if me and the coach were like cool, like I so, did. So you weren't cool with any of the coaches that you played on. Well, it, there was a respect. It was it was business. Like you coach and I play, but yeah. I was confrontational of the coach say, "Hey, BJ, you couldn't shoot. This is what I do." And then I was. It was confrontational. It was always confrontation here. Mm. Like it me. was always. It was always conflict. Yeah. We were more comfortable with the conflict. Like it wasn't like um, me and the coach were cool. Like uh, this is my guy, and this guy is going to run a play for me. No, like there was some type of conflict that was always here. It was always a give and a take. Was that because of like an on court? Like the coach will tell you to run this play, and you think that it's better to run something else? Or? Well, it was. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was competition. If a guy went at me and the coach, like for instance. Guy comes down the court and ISOs me. Mm, can't say that. Okay. Go get him back. Okay. Now, the coach may say, we're going to run three out, which is somebody else's play. Now, nope. I'm, yeah. I'm pissed at the coach. Like, wait yeah. a minute. Yeah, yeah. Let me go get him what? back. No, no, no. Hold on. Mm-hmm. You saw this guy just ISO me. You want me to guard this guy. But you won't let me go at him. That's conflict. Yeah. And that, I'm not letting that slide because if Coach X was doing something against your offensive scheme, you would make an adjustment. Yep. So there was always conflict here. It okay, was yeah, always conf- – it was, it's always – it wasn't like a – this is my guy type situation. Like nowadays. <laughs> well, it, it just is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, it, I, I didn't expect to go smooth. But what I did expect was to be 
you know, did what I did expect is for us to have a respect for one another's views on the game mm -hmm. to compete. Okay, and what allowed us to mesh or work together was winning. Yeah. So every day, whether it was in practice, games, video sessions, there was always some conflict. Okay. Okay. And there was always a competitive edge that you tried to find. And if you were able to, you know, have that level of respect with the coach who, you know, you, you guys had an understanding, mm -hmm. like everyone says, oh, man, coaching like a Michael Jordan. No, everyone couldn't do that. Yeah. Because of the conflict. Yeah. Okay. Not just from the player to player. Coach to player. Assistant coach to player. Yeah. This is what people don't realize. Yeah. yeah, yeah you like, oh, you so. don't, like, these guys, like Larry Bird and those guys, there was conflict always there. Okay. I, 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 I if player X was having a, a good game, okay, you're playing against, a, I'm playing against a star player. Let's say I'm playing against an Isaiah Thomas. Okay. For some reason, I get a quick 10 points in the first quarter. Mm, the hot hand. The game plan of the Pistons has to change. Yes. That's a, the, that's a fact. The yeah. game plan has to change. I mean, I mean, I mean unless. No, it, no it's, there's no unless. There's unless they're willing to just say, okay, let's see if B.J. Armstrong can be us today. No, no, no. No, it, it, no it, it, that, that, that's the, that's the, that, no, it's not a, because if, it happens one time, it can happen again. Okay. But if I'm playing in Milwaukee right now, okay, and Grayson Allen scores 10 points quick early start of the game, I'm not going to change my plan to take focus away from Giannis to focus on Grayson Do I think Grayson Allen is going to score 40 and win the game? No. That's Do I the, think Giannis will? That's yes. The, that, and that's the mentality today. Again, I'm just sharing the... It, okay. Uh, it, it, if... Someone was going after. Let's say I'm playing with the star player. I wasn't comparing you to Grayson Allen, by the way. No, was, no, no. I didn't mean to be. It doesn't matter. Who, an NBA mean. player is an NBA player. Everyone is edible, and everyone's capable of getting yeah, yeah. forty scored on or scoring forty. Mm -hmm. If someone scores, we got a game plan. We're going to attack such and such. Suddenly, the star player that's playing against, like I, I'll give you a prime example. This is a prime example. We're playing the Washington Wizards one night. Okay. And it was this young kid, LeBradford Smith. Okay. Out of nowhere, he goes off. Yeah? He goes off. Okay. Now, you can, you can say, oh, everyone just has a good game. We won the game. Guy has 37, 40 points. Who cares? That's not how it worked. And everybody in that era knows that's not how it works. Mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're just a guy off the street. I don't care who you are. No, you can score 40. You just can't do it again here against me. Yeah. Our game plan totally changed in that moment. This is one where Jordan had 47. I, I don't think he had 47 that night. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm just searching now the LeBradford Smith game. And Michael Jordan took it personally. Yeah, he took it when we went back. We played him on a back-to-back. -back. I'm talking about oh, the very the first okay, game. The first game, yeah, yeah. I'm talking yeah, about yeah. the first game. Yeah. Okay. You follow me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is Where, uh, Smith got a 37. So the, the but the game has to change. Mm -hmm. So the conflict. So I don't want to. I don't want. I can't play with a coach. And be like, hey, don't worry, guys. Good job. Just keep playing. No, this is competition. And you got to learn how to play the game within the game. There's rules to this game. Mm -hmm. Now, the rules are different now, and that's how they play. I don't want to play where it's okay for someone to score 40 on me. I'm not, and, and I, I got 40 you. scored on me. I got 40 scored on me. Yeah. A few times. More than a few times. <laughs> but what I... What I loved you, about that era... You've got to at least try to get it back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't yeah, just yeah, not yeah, yeah. get it back. You've you, got to you try. try. No, yeah, you can't... There, there is no... There, there's no, like, no, this guy iso me, and and that's the way that... He's a star player. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know what I mean? Like, I got iso Jordan has a... He has a play coming, right? Because I was... 
Biker will make sure that you get it. That, you get it. That, that's the game in the game. Yeah. That that's 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 the game. Now, now that that to me, like, okay, Steph is going. Like, you know, I watch Steph play, and I, I love talking to old guys. They say, well, "What will you do?" Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm I'm gonna go at him mm-hmm. yep. and see what's going on. Yeah. That's that's but the now, fun part. But now yeah. it's like the the way that the NBA. Goes now is so Steph's going off in the finals, right? He's so then then Boston are trying to get Tatum to go at Steph by trying to get Steph switched on switch. to Tatum. But then the Warriors' defense is so good they can avoid every different but, scheme but, that the Celtics run. But what really should it be is Marcus Smart just going back at Steph. Exactly. This is what I'm saying. Like to me, it's like. But the, the star player at Tatum has to get a ball and. Yeah, yeah. See that? Saying? See like, that doesn't. Well, let's just. Let's just figure out how to get the switch on our star player. No. no. Like, I would if this guy is going guy. at me, I'm going back at you. Yeah. Because now Mo knows he's in a fight. Mm-hmm. It can't just be like Mo's going to go at me and then and then I, I'm, I'm going to go get someone else, else to get, get out of here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That doesn't yeah, – yeah. that, that just doesn't yeah. – that doesn't fit the vibe. So, insane all of that. I I I'm I'm more comfortable in the conflict. Yeah, I'm not saying it's better. I'm no, not saying it's I worse. You. I'm, I feel but there, there there has to be this conflict that's there that keeps us, the coaches. I think keeps them on edge, keeps the players on edge. It keeps us as a group on edge, and it's understood. Like you know what I mean. Like it's mm-hmm. understood. Like it's understood when the Knicks played the Bulls in that era, that. Bill Jackson was going to bring his A game versus Pat Riley and vice versa. Yeah. And we understood that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It couldn't be. Yeah. Everyone like knows our, what it our, is. Our, our, Out of timeout plays would had to be on point that game. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> had to be on point. I'm just watching yeah. the tripod get closer yeah, yeah, and closer yeah. and closer to falling yeah. over. <laughs> I know. No, I, 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 and I, we understood yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we played against other star players. Yeah. You knew that that's for MJ to go out. Yeah. yeah. And he knew when I played against somebody. That he, yeah, that's it, your guy. So yeah. Was, you know, yeah. when Bill Cartwright was playing against another seven footer. I'm going to go get him a touch in the post. Well, hey, early. First play of the game, we going, that's where we going tonight. Mm-hmm. You follow what I'm saying? It, it's, it's, yeah. it's understood. It's a war. Yeah, it's, it's none of this war. switching. It's, and, it's and, now it's, I'm going to try and find the weak point of your it, defense. And say my best player is Joel Embiid. Well, to be fair, Embiid goes up against anyone, okay? Right. But just how the majority of teams do, okay? We're going to take our best player. We're going to take your worst defender. And, and we're going to try, try and get, to get to it. Yeah. And yeah, I've watched see. some offenses spend 20 seconds trying to get the switch. And then and they're then left four seconds to try and create. And, that, and that's fine. It, that's, that's this and era. I, I get it. And late game situations, you see like LeBron will do it a lot and Luka will do it a lot. And there's nothing wrong with it, you know? Trying to find a mismatch and an right. advantage. But when I see teams doing that in the first quarter, I look at it and I think, just at least come up with a game plan, like a better yeah, game. Yeah, I like. mean, and, and that's fine. And, and again, that's this year. I would prefer when it's mono and That That yeah. to me was what made, like, okay, like, okay, I'm playing against Tim Hardaway. There's no place to hide. You got to try and cross him up. The king of the cross. You got to try and cross him up. You know, it, that, that's just what, that's just what I would prefer to play that way. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I one of my greatest speeches, I'm like to protect everyone, one of my greatest speeches ever before a playoff game. Whereas when the coach comes on the board, he looks at it, and, uh, you know, and, and one of our assistant coaches did an incredible job. He had every play, every matchup, every play call, all of that. And then the head coach just comes in, <laughs> wipes it off. <laughs> I mean, literally, it must have took it must have taken our hours. assistant coach hours to do this. Yeah, because like, you got everything, and you got to scout all the film. Yeah, you got to draw he every. He comes yeah. in, he, he goes, "I'm gonna win my matchup. <laughs> win yours. <laughs> <laughs> now let's go." And I respect and, it, and I respected that. Yeah, because you know I the respect because you. you know what? It wasn't about let's find the, let's find the. It wasn't about no gimmicks. It wasn't about yeah. It wasn't about no. It was about. I'm gonna win my matchup. You know who your matchup is. Yeah. You know who your matchup is. I'm gonna win, and he said it. I'm gonna win my coaching matchup. Mm-hmm. Now, what you gonna do? And he went down the list. Mm-hmm. 
It's it's the sum of the parts makes the win. It's the same as what I say is like, if you just focus on winning every possession, you will never lose a game. Right, and and, and I re- and that's and and that's what I love. I that's to me mm-hmm. is what made the NBA, the NBA. I mean, and it's different today, and that's fine too. And you know, every era is different. But I'm telling you, the funnest thing was I, to go out and play in, in, against your matchup. I get really excited now because it's very rare to watch Giannis guard Kevin Durant. Right. I get really excited because we've seen so many stars who I'm not going to say they don't often guard the other team's best player. Yeah, I just want to see your matchup. Versa. Yeah. But I want to see the best players go in. That's why I gave credit to Jason Tatum for guarding Kevin Durant. That's why but, I give credit to Jimmy Butler for guarding yeah, Jason Tatum yeah. and Giannis and vice versa. But there are a lot of players in this league that will... It's just the way their challenge. coaches are. And, it, and it's not them. It's not it's, the players it's, because it's, 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 I bet if they played pickup, yeah. they would be doing exactly what you just described. Well, that's that's but how you get your reputation. If you're on the playground anywhere, mm. you don't get your you don't get your reputation going to guard the second best guy. Mm-hmm. You got to go after the top guy. Mm-hmm. So, again, that's why I said I don't know if I would enjoy p- playing in today's with Era, the coaching. Yeah. Not because the player, the players I think are fantastic, but the coaching to me, no, because there's no conflict. There's not enough conflict. You know, I've had too many confrontations with coaches. Because you don't like the numbers, because everything is through the numbers now. Yeah, yeah, the confrontation, but the, it's kind of, like, it was nothing for coaches and players to like, just go at it. Oh, like, it's, ma- it's major news now. Yeah, now like, it's like, okay, like, remember like, Jimmy Butler and Eric Spolster on the bench last yeah, season? Yeah, that, was, that like, was in the news for four days. Four days. That was the new cycle. That seemed like every day. I mean, I know it didn't happen every day, but that was like, mm. that, that was like, that was normal. I hear you. That was just normal. I hear you. You know what I mean? And then you was like, okay, I respect that. You know, it, it wasn't even like, I don't even care what was sp- said. It was like, oh, okay, I respect that. These guys really believe it. And, and they believe in themselves enough to stand up for mm-hmm. what they believe. I, 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 I respected that. And then you moved on. So, I don't know. For me, the NBA was a very impersonal experience because the only thing that allowed us to to be together was to win. Yeah. It, it didn't care about numbers and all that other stuff. And I, 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 I would have much preferred, and I was fortunate to play in that era because I, I just think the coaches – they were just confrontational people. I like I, that's the best way I could put it. Like it was like, and that's maybe I just became that was normal for me. Mm. But this whole, you know, the way it's today, I I don't get it. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you, but you know there are some great elements to the game today. Yeah, oh, you know what I mean, there's the a lot of the, great, the game is phenomenal. I I agree. I would like to see more of the grudge matchups of I'm gonna go at you tonight. I don't care if I'm not the star player on the team. Like when uh, what I really enjoyed in the playoffs one year was Terry Rozier and Eric Bledsoe. It's, it's incredible. I loved it. They were going back and forth you, in the press conference, and then they went to the game, and then Terry Rozier mm. cooked him to win. No, no, to send it to overtime. He crossed the hell out of him, hit a step back three, I, sends the game. To, I, that's what I live for. So make the NBA more beefy again. Like as in beef, well, I don't think it's beefy, beefy but, but I will say this. I, I was I was thinking about okay, what what is it that that I that allowed the NBA to play in that way? Not that I want to change the game. I don't want to change the game. I don't want it to go back. I don't want to be another guy that's the game was better. What I would like to see though is that the players are good enough to play together mm-hmm. and be able to take advantage of the mismatch wherever it occurs. Mm-hmm. So not to have to. De- so every game now is about finding the right matchup to go in isolation. If player X is the weak link, run your system to get it to where you want to get the ball mm-hmm. so that the team can be exploited. Yeah. Not where I have to just, well, I'm going to bring him to get the switch. Bring him to me and set a screen and then move out of the way. I feel you. You follow what I'm saying? Like, you. that's the thing that, like, like, it, it, like. first of all, <laughs> I remember the first time, I remember the very first time, Mo, 
And then I, because I get, now you make you, the very first time I was put into isolation, I can't tell you how that felt. It was embarrassing. Yeah, like, I, I, I can, I, I remember, I remember who, who was it? I, I remember who it was. It was Cotton Fitzsimmons. Okay. The, the late Cotton Fitzsimmons, coaching for Phoenix. Uh, and I was guarding Kevin Johnson. And he said, everyone clear out. And they were, and, and okay, you, you're running a play. And the one thing that you, you, <laughs> you didn't want it. We had a joke in the NBA. I, I don't know if it's still there. That you didn't want to be the highway. So I was, my number was ten. Yeah. So I didn't want to be highway ten. Meaning everybody drives on that highway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Coach just comes down. Coach for some. He just comes down, and they're running a play. And I remember he just said, "Oh, take him." Everybody clear out. Hmm. And I can't tell you the disappointment that I felt in that moment. But I remember, I vividly remember that moment. Yeah. Right in front of his bench. And and Kevin Johnson didn't hesitate. And that was the first time that someone just. just did he made the bucket. I can't remember well, whether he made stopped? it. I think I fouled him. I think I fouled him. Yeah, you just let me. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I think I fouled. No, it was like it was like one of those moments. Like it was like a, I was a. Uh, I think I was like a rookie. Rookie or something. I think yeah, I was a rookie. Yeah, yeah. And I remember vividly, like I was upset, and I remember the veterans came to me after the game and said, "Listen, you got to make your mind up quickly because if you get a reputation in this league, it's going to follow around the league." Yeah. And that's when I made a commitment that I got to be more than respectable on that end to be able to force them to go to another place, okay? Because every offense was what we called in the NBA feed the pig because the pig was going to be hungry. Mm -hmm. And you got to run that play off. If a guy scores, run back, run it back. Yep. And you kept running that play back. So I, 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 it, it was it's something in me like when I see, when I see guys switching – I just think like, man, like you mean you mean everybody in the arena just like accepts the fact that yeah I'm the weakest guy and I'm the guy you know what I mean like it was like well I'm that guy no that's not happening I hate you you follow what I'm saying like I hate you. And, and I'm not saying that, I don't know if it's better or worse but there was a certain level of pride yeah, with that yeah I think now is I think now in the NBA it's more okay to be a bad defender yeah like, yeah it's, okay it's like to it, be Trey Young yeah why not I'll still give you 30 it, points and I'll shoot from the logo and if, if we if we lose it's not my fault because I've given you 30 it's your it's fault Clint Capella yeah, for everyone scoring in the paint it's or a, I'm Donovan Mitchell and it's not my fault we lost Rudy Gobert it's your fault because they played 5 out and you can't guard the premier yeah, it's your fault we lost it was the just, it, that to me it just seems like, it's a different way. and But, okay, the players, I'm okay with the players. But the coaches, to me, is like, the coach wouldn't allow me to do that. Yeah. Like, my coach would, like, okay. Yeah. I can't play you if, if you know, you're compromising the team. Like, you have a responsibility to the team. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you got to be a great defensive player, but what I am saying is you have to be. This is, this is what I liked about the finals. Both teams had five guys that could hold their own. Not saying they're all-time defenders, but they have five right, guys, guys that could hold their own on defense. You saw the teams, the Milwaukee's of the world, when they had uh, Grayson Allen on the court and the other guys that can't guard, right. they got pinpointed and they got taken out of there. You see in the Miami Heat's of the world, they got weak spots in their defense, it got exploited and it got taken out of there. So the two teams that win, like you say, they got five guys. Like, you don't look at that Celtics team and think, I'm going to go at him. They went at Rob Williams in a screen roll because he was coming off an injury and he's hobbling right. around. But, okay, see if that happens next year. But that's what I liked about the two teams in the finals. Yeah, I mean, it, it's always it's it's always amazing watching the finals because it always gets – it reverts back to what it it is, right? You got to defend. Mm -hmm. Those are the best de – two best defensive teams in the league. Mm -hmm. So, as much as the game is changing – the game always remains the same, mm -hmm. and uh, but those and, are and just things that's that why I, I didn't uh, say anything when you said Philly were the favorites to win the Eastern Conference with their backcourt of uh, James Harden and uh, Tyrese <laughs> Maxey. So we'll see, we'll see when it gets to the finals. That's a super long episode. Bonus content for you. Apologies for missing a few this week, BJ. You ready? This season, uh, the season ain't begun, but 2K comes out on Friday this week. So either before or after. Man, well, I, I just think... It, so the season here, begins. We're rocking with us. I'm trying to get BJ a new camera so that the video comes even better. So stay tuned. 
stay locked in TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch. We're everywhere. Except for Facebook. I never use Facebook. That's for old people now. Maybe I need to get back on Facebook. Maybe. What's old is new. Maybe maybe I'll sell BJ on Facebook and I'll do all the other ones. Who knows? Stay tuned and hit the link in the bio to get your copy of NBA 2K. And until next time, you can say them. You can tell them. Get buckets. You know the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> My man. <laughs>